I'm Sarah Bivens. And I'm Matthew Bivens. We had a home birth back in 2016. So we started a podcast about it. And then grew it into a birth brand to help future and current parents believe in their success with home birth. This is the place to hear home birth stories along with helpful resources and tips to feel empowered and supported in your birth journey. This is Doing It At Home. Today, we have a sponsored episode with our friends from Needed. Needed is a nutrition company working to optimally nourish families before, during, and after pregnancy. Founded by two friends who were on their own journeys of seeking the best nutrition for fertility, pregnancy, and postpartum, Needed is helping mamas and mamas-to-be better identify their nutrition needs, creating supplements that truly work in meeting those needs, and building a supportive community of like-minded mamas and trusted health practitioners. We've now had both founders on the show. Back in episode 290, we spoke with Julie Sawaya, and she shared her home birth story. And you can find a link to that episode in the show notes. Today, we're speaking with Ryan Woodbury about why most prenatals fall short when it comes to optimal nutrition, other important nutrients for preconception, pregnancy, and postpartum, and perinatal nutrition for men and the conversation around sperm health. Ryan breaks all of this down for us in a clear way because sometimes these topics can be overwhelming. This is so that families can feel educated and empowered when it comes to nutrition before, during, and after pregnancy. So go to thisisneeded.com and follow them on Instagram at at needed to learn more about the company and their products and make sure you use the code D-I-A-H for 15% off your order. Links for all of that along with the code are in the show notes. Enjoy the episode. Ryan, welcome to Doing It at Home. Thanks so much for joining us. So excited to be here. It's wonderful to see you both. Yes, we, you too. We're going to get into some really awesome stuff today. Yeah, so, we are. so get your notebooks ready because there's going to be a lot of really great information, but in a really grounded way and something that's really relevant to listeners who are before pregnancy in pregnancy or after pregnancy. And it's really centered around the nutrition for all of those stages of your life because you, Ryan, and your co-founder, Julie, started Needed, a company, a nutrition company, really about optimally nourishing families before pregnancy, during pregnancy, and after pregnancy. So we're going to get into that in a minute here. But before we do, I really just want to hit with some hard facts and knowledge here because there are people listening right now who are wondering about what prenatal vitamins to take or they're taking them and they're not sure if they're the best ones for them. Um, I know and I can relate. Sometimes you just think I'm going to get the cheapest option and if they have a gummy, great. (laughs) And you just go with that. You know, you don't even, you don't ask any more questions. Yeah. Or maybe that's what your doctor is telling you is best. So could you just break it down for us a little bit? Because you have the knowledge, you've done the research, you've done the testing, and you yourself, spoiler alert, are pregnant. (laughs) And so 25 weeks today, actually, uh, which is kind of crazy. It's flown by. Congratulations. And you are planning a home birth? Planning a home birth. Planning yeah. Home so excited birth. to be part of the, the home birth community. That's, That's amazing. Cool. And so not only do you have all the research and, and the education, and this is your profession, but you're living it as well. And I, I really love that aspect. So all of that being said, just hit us with a little bit of, I guess, what's wrong with most prenatals out there? Totally. Yeah. So I think what we were shocked to find is that the research suggested that despite 97% of women in the U.S. taking a prenatal while they were pregnant, 95% of them were nutrient deficient. And this nutrient deficiency really can lead to anything from sort of suboptimal outcomes for mom and baby to, in some cases, really, really bad outcomes. And we were just sort of shocked by the rates of deficiency. And really myself and my business partner, Julie, both had been longtime nutrition nerds. So we wanted to see if we sort of fit the group with everyone else who did some extensive nutritional testing as we were both beginning to think about becoming mothers and found that we were sort of right there with the statistics that we were both pretty critically deficient in a number of nutrients that contribute to the suboptimal to really bad outcomes in pregnancy. Hmm. And, you know, I was an environmental science major focused on like food systems, like know a ton around how to use source quality food. And unfortunately, 
wasn't getting enough from diet. And then my prenatal that I was taking wasn't getting me anywhere close to filling in the additional gaps. And I think that was just surprising Mm -hmm. that sort of the normal one or two a day capsule that we might pick up from Whole Foods or Amazon or the local pharmacy or the gummies that are delicious just weren't (laughs) getting anywhere close to filling in um, those gaps. And I think it was sort of shocking. And really, I think we, we were really driven by these facts and how do we look at better supporting um, women and, and children at this life stage. So were the deficiencies, are they due to people not taking enough of the prenatals? Like maybe they're not taking the recommended amount or is it because they they don't take it for a long enough time? Or is it that the actual you know, gummy or pill or capsule just doesn't have, doesn't contain what it needs to contain? Like what's actually going yeah, on? Yeah, I would say it's a combination of all three, okay. but probably the biggest driving reason is that the most supplements on the market, most prenatals on the market are designed around the RDAs, which is a government standard to avoid a disease condition, Mm. Um, which is great. We all want to avoid disease, but oftentimes avoiding disease can be dramatically different from what dosage levels optimally support a woman before, during, and after pregnancy. So it really at the core does start with how these supplements are designed and in how they're formulated, but really can come down to, um, I think layers of other things around it, around, you know, it can be tricky if you wait to start taking your prenatal, um, in the first trimester when you have a ton of nausea versus starting well beforehand to make sure you're optimally supported going into pregnancy, even though the old prenatals wouldn't do that, um, to just making sure that many prenatals have nutrient forms that aren't readily easy for your body to actually use. You maybe are taking something that would be at an optimal dosage, but if you can't actually metabolize it and put it to use, Mm. it's doing you no good either. And so a little bit nuanced, but the core reason is that both supplements are designed with a less is more philosophy. Mm. And really, um, we think this time pregnancy is the most nutritionally intensive time of a woman's life that instead moving towards how do we optimally support you so such that you are set up to feel your best at this stage um, is so critically important. Mm hmm. So for the woman right now who, you know, has a bottle of prenatals in her house and she's probably going to look at it and examine it or is, you know, out in the store and holding these bottles, you're saying that vast majority of them, what they're holding in their hand was created with a standard that is such, you take these, you probably won't get a disease, not you take this and you're going to thrive and be optimally nourished in this really important time in your life. That's that's basically what we're saying here. That is what we're saying. Wow. And like, certainly we don't want to go scare you. You take the information that you learn and then sure. you make a decision from there. Yeah. But um, really the person, especially for our first time moms, first time pregnancies, that is going to be hurt most likely from taking a suboptimal prenatal mm. is yourself because we are biologically set up to give everything to our growing baby Mm -hmm. and, you know, why many unhealthy women can produce very healthy kids and really sort of being able to, um, make sure you're optimally supported such that your postpartum recovery and your ability to thrive as a mom, as time goes on, or just feel better during pregnancy and have the right, you know, energy levels to continue at your life, we think is a, a part that wasn't getting supported. Um, really before we sort of dug into what was missing. So let's get into that. How did you do that? And kind of how did needed come to be? And then you have solutions for the problem that you found. And we're (laughs) going to get into that as well. Yeah, absolutely. So I think, as I mentioned, so Julie and I um, met sort of at a time in our lives when we were both thinking about becoming moms, what we consider the preconception Mm -hmm. phase. um, And we're digging into the research, I think both through starting our own motherhood journeys, but also watching good friends go through the gamut of every single sort of 
prenatal sort of hiccup from infertility to hyperemesis to gestational diabetes to postpartum depression and just digging into, you know, what can we prevent? What can we better support um, for both ourselves and our friends in the future? Um, So really dug into the research, found um, huge gaps in where prenatals weren't meeting sort of optimal standards and what the clinical research was suggesting that outcomes are better in pregnancy, but then also realizing that there were enormous gaps in the research as women's health, especially in pregnancy, is very understudied. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. So we knew we wanted to create sort of a new protocol for how do you optimally support women, had the basis of some research, but with the gaps, what we did is went to sort of expert practitioners and spent three years in partnership with a wide variety of different women's health practitioners to learn about their clinical practice, because many of them through extensive nutritional and hormone testing had developed sort of new protocols outside of the standard of care to be able to better support women at this life stage. So we were able to work with them, aggregate that data together um, in order to create this new new protocol, new understanding of um, that's you know highly supported by data from thousands of women of how can we better and safely support um, women and children at this life stage. And so what do you have now as an answer to those (laughs) gaps, especially in the prenatal vitamin realm? You know, you have a couple of different options that serve in a couple different ways. So I'd love for you to share that. Yeah, so absolutely. So all of that research led us to launching our complete plan for prenatal nutrition meant to optimally support you before, during, and after pregnancy. And of course, the anchor product of that four-part complete plan is a prenatal multivitamin. Um, That's what we think to take inherently in pregnancy so you can get all of your vitamin and mineral needs. But we looked at this prenatal a little bit differently and again, redesigned it from the ground up based off of the input of both the clinical research and this practitioner base to optimally select every single nutrient, every single dosage, um, and then making sure sort of the rest of the product was pulled together in a way um, that was optimal. So there's, it's incredible how many gross additives are in prenatals and then how many prenatals aren't um, rigorously third-party tested to make sure they are um, sort of what's in the bottle matches what's on the label. Mm-hmm. There are huge sort of gaps in that for um, products that are sort of sold in retail in the US, which is amazing. And then, of course, um, is it something that you can take consistently because your prenatal will do no good if you can't um, if you can't incorporate it into your life. So with that, we created um, three versions of a multivitamin, a powder, which is our most complete offering because powder just gives you the volume to be able to dose high enough because Mm -hmm. a lot of the nutrients that are lacking in the one or two a day options are very bulky. So you just physically can't fit them in there. And powder gives that vehicle um, to fit them and be able to fully dose optimally, but then also to give an alternative from kind of capsules such that You can take it in a delicious smoothie or mix it into oatmeal, um, which is a nice alternative in terms of making it easier for women to take. And then we also have two capsule versions. So an eight capsule complete prenatal that um, is a favorite product for many. Um, Again, it's a little bit less nutritionally supportive than the powder uh, because the powder would take closer to 13 to 15 capsules, but a very supportive option and eight being something that most women find manageable to split between two meals or three meals or do it all at once. And then we did just launch an essentials three capsule version when really, you know, in the height of nausea or anything else, taking more than one pill per meal just really isn't an option. So excited to have those three as a basis, all designed with the philosophy around Um, For the first two, 
optimal nutrient forms at optimal dosages. And then for the essentials, optimal nutrient forms at supportive dosages that are most important to be there in the first trimester. And do you find that some women will choose to mix them up? You know, like if you want a smoothie just a couple of days a week, and so you put the powder in there, and then the other days you do the capsules, like that's what I could see myself doing because I love me some smoothies, but maybe not every single day. And so then it'd be great to have the capsules for those days. (laughs) Yeah, great question. And and I think we are increasingly seeing that is what most customers are doing. It's actually what I do because I think, like you said, I love smoothies, but I'm more of a, you know, four day versus seven day a week yeah. smoothie girl, especially as we're moving into the the colder months, <laughs> even in LA. Yeah. Um, but having the ability to um, switch back and forth and take the capsules when you're on the road or you want eggs and toast for breakfast instead. Um, and that mix and matching being very sort of helpful to, again, the important part of being able to take it consistently. Mm-hmm. One of the things you said a couple of minutes ago, you talked about the additives in some of the other prenatals. Um, I'm curious to to hear, you know, why why are there additives in there? And then that piqued my interest in terms of your products because that without those additives, it sounds like they're they're cleaner. Is that the word that yeah, you would use? We our products are extraordinarily clean. We tried to really remove all of those gross, yucky additives. Um and you'll you'll look at the label and find that they're incredibly clean. Why the additives are there to begin with, I think truthfully, it's a combination of um cost yeah. that they're they're cheap versus some of the the cleaner ingredients that you can use instead. And secondarily for manufacturing ease, that a lot of additives are added as kind of fillers and flow agents to make sure it's easier for the capsule to actually get packed into a tiny little, the powder to actually get ta- packed into a tiny little capsule. Mm, okay. But, and I think there just historically hasn't been as much pressure on companies to sort of clean up labels as we are now seeing, I think, across the consumer products industry. But what's, I think, amazing and what I find shocking is probably the worst prenatals, the worst offenders in terms of poor nutrient forms. And by poor nutrient forms, we mean synthetic ingredients that aren't found in nature. So it's sort of a man-made composition that your body isn't used to otherwise kind of processing. So this would be folic acid or cyanocobalamin, a type of B12, um, as two examples that um, we prefer in both those cases a folate, methylfolate, or a adenosyl methylcobalamin, which are in the forms that your body can actually use those two nutrients. Um, And then with additives, like it's amazing how many toxic red dyes and things like that Mm. still are in prenatals. And Mm. again, the worst offenders that we see again and again are actually the prescription prenatals. Um, So the ones that um, you might actually be getting a prescription for getting covered by insurance, Mm -hmm. which is sad and scary because you would think those would be um, the most vetted, but Mm -hmm. I think they've also had, um, you know, the least pressure um, to potentially update formulas because they don't have, you know, whole foods, um, you know, going down their back to say, actually, we've banned X ingredient and aren't going to allow you in store anymore. Got it. Okay. That's tricky. I, I, what I also get irked by, and you see this as you start to label read more, is the companies that will kind of greenwashing. Is that what it's called? When you make it seem like it's super clean or you just make it a white bottle with like a leaf on it and it says vegan on it. Vegan does not mean healthy. By any by any standard. And so, you know, or it's gluten free, again, does not yeah. mean it's healthy. And so I think people just they smack those labels on there and then we get all excited and we think, look, it's gluten free and it's vegan. It's so clean and it's not. And that's it's the trickiness. And it's amazing. It's constant. Like one of the main tricks that in the supplements industry that people would never think of is many of the food based vitamins. They actually just. um pour a bunch of synthetic um, vitamins into sprouted plants. So they can say it's from food, even though they added the nutritional label, like as part of the manufacturing process, and it was just sort of grown into the water that 
you know, the pea or whatever it was grown in was included. Wow. And there's just endless tricks like that, that they play to be able to get to the label claim. And that's the really difficult part. And the one that I like want to reinforce is just, it is not easy for the average woman to like, or even for, you know, to, we had nutritional, you know, training and it took us a number of years mm-hmm. to be able to decipher and figure this out. What is actually real? What are the manufacturers doing behind the scenes? How is every ingredient made? And that's why it took us almost four years to bring these products to market Mm. as it took a very diligent effort. And the amount of stuff that you uncover with going behind the scenes is pretty amazing. And, And that's where really, I think, in communicating why we're different, we've relied most heavily on um, working with a wide swath of women's health practitioners who are, you know, expert in nutrition, understand a lot of these nuances and can help us sort of communicate um, more collectively, you know, why the difference and what to look for. And going back to your story, you know, what I really appreciate about you and Julie is that you all were you found that through the prenatals you all were taking, there was deficiencies. And so that kind of sent you on this path of, well, let me explore this and let me apply you know, the things that I know and understand and, and do research and connect with people to create something that, as you mentioned before, fills in the gap. Because I know when I go to the store, I, I, you, know, you mentioned the pretty label, Sarah. Like I, I will just go off what the label says and grab it, but I, don't, I rarely flip it over and read the nutritional label. I can't tell you how many times I brought something home and then Sarah flips it around and is like, it's nope. got this, 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 and this. You got to, <laughs> we, we don't keep it. And, you know, I want to be able to trust the company that I'm purchasing from. So the fact that you all created something that filled the need that you were experiencing personally, I think is a big, um, a big value as well, a big difference maker in, in what makes needed stand out. Yes, the difference we is... We hope so. And it's like for other products, you know, you go buy cleaning supplies and they look really pretty and they have the greenwashing label, but you have the environmental working group to tell you, is it okay or not? And there yeah. hadn't been that resource base for the supplement space, specifically the prenatal supplement base. And we we did end up creating um, a review of 75 plus prenatals on our website. So with the oh, nice. intention of, you know, even if our product doesn't work for you, we want to help you find the best one out there. And here's what we know about other prenatals on the market. And um, hopefully, again, lend to, we're really doing this to help women and children. Like, you know, we're, we are a business, but I think there is an inherent, um, I think, care and mission orientation around why we're doing that. So hopefully that can be a resource um, to many of you listening as well. And one of the things that I understand about the supplement industry is that you can white label things. Uh, you could have yeah, it manufactured by somebody else in a factory you've <laughs> never been to and, and not necessarily know all the ingredients and purchase it, slap your label on it, and then sell it. And that's... That's the vast majority of what is happening in the industry. And mm-hmm. I think part of where there had been sort of stagnation in that existing products weren't cutting it because you actually really kind of looked at the label closely many of the existing products under different brands were very quite close, almost the exact same product in many cases, because they were white labeled. You go to a manufacturer, they have their menu of what you're able to order off of, and then you just put your brand on it. And I think what we did with designing from scratch and picking every single underlying nutrient is very uncommon for the space. Yes, because the difference in that scenario you painted, Matthew, of you being in the store, Needed took the time research-wise as to what's actually going to be best for your body. And those companies took probably the same amount of time and arguably a lot more money (laughs) to figure out what you would buy, what they could get you to buy versus what's actually going to be best for you. Um, Anyway, that's I'm speculating on that, but, and, and that, that review, the reviews that you did were really helpful to me. There were some eye opening stuff in there for me. There were things in there that I had taken and I thought, oops, I like, oh, and it's okay. You know, I don't need to get down on myself or, or be angry or anything like that. It's just like, okay, great. I have this information now. I am curious, you know, because we talk about before, during, and after pregnancy, this being relevant. Could you or does needed give a rule of thumb for someone who's wondering 
how long before and how long after? Yeah, so absolutely. So our prenatal, and then we'll get into some of the other products that make up the complete plan. They are intended all for before, during, and after. So before meaning in that preconception period when you are planning to get pregnant, if, you know, of course, there's many cases where pregnancies are unplanned, um, but if you are planning for a family, that ability to start beforehand, most of our practitioners will recommend at least six months before trying to conceive such that you can build up nutrient stores. I think some of it is planning against um, how you'll feel in that um, first trimester. If you're not able to take something consistently every day, you you have those stores built up to be able to um, rely on. But I think also nutrition very much affects fertility. Um, so that planning earlier can support um, the conception process and conception sort of outcomes. Um, so that for the before, and then we highly recommend sticking with your prenatal um, through at least, you know, what is called the fourth trimester, mm-hmm. but really through the entire time that you're nursing. And then mm-hmm. there are big benefits from taking it for another number of months thereafter okay. um, to make sure your body is fully recovered. And, you know, it is a, it is a great prenatal that sort of many moms will just decide to stay on as a, you know, a great energy boost to keep them going in the craziness, hecticness of being a mom. Um, so it is something that you can continue to take. We pulled iron out of the formula. Iron is usually one of the main ingredients um, where you can't take a prenatal at all stages because you don't, um, you basically there's extra iron in order to support blood volume, baby's development, et cetera, et cetera. We removed iron because iron is something that needs do very sort of dramatically by life stage and by individual. Mm -hmm. So, and most women are able to get their ferritin levels, their iron levels tested by their doctor to be able to dose appropriately. But because of that, it is a great product for all stages. And then we would just recommend um, postpartum adding some extra vitamin D um, on top of your prenatal multi. Um, There's 4,000 IU of vitamin D in the prenatal multi. This is a study dose that really has um, kind of been the clinical research shown. There's better outcomes for mom and baby um, at 4,000 IU. Some will need more depending on, you know, diet, geography, et cetera, during Mm -hmm. pregnancy, but 4,000 IU is a great baseline. But then there's a, there's a bunch of research sort of showing that sort of 6,000 IU or above is um, optimal postpartum while nursing. So we sell a separate topper uh, to add more vitamin D on top of it. Okay. So let's, let's get into a couple of the other nutrients, other things to focus on in addition to a multi that you all address as well. Absolutely. So basically in looking at optimal, looking at the research, working with our practitioner base, we found that sort of vitamins and minerals that you typically see in a prenatal multivitamin weren't alone in everything that you need to actually optimally support women at this life stage. So we created three other products as part of our complete plan to give you that kind of comprehensive baseline nourishment. And so the other three products include an omega-3, DHA plus EPA, a collagen protein, and a pre and probiotic. And I'll, I'll quickly run through the highlights of each. Um, an omega-3, many of you have likely heard of it. DHA, fatty acid, mm. really core reason is supports baby's brain development. Um, DHA builds the the cells of baby's brain. We like EPA being there as well because it supports hormone balance in mom. And then EPA also works synergistically with DHA to actually make sure DHA crosses the placenta to be able to um, get to baby, um, which is important in terms of how, you know, nutrients, how they work together in nature is very important in in a forming design. And DHA, EPA, you mostly hear about getting these from fish. Ours is sourced from algae. 
fish actually don't make DHA and EPA themselves. They just bioaccumulate it from algae in their diet. So wanted to go direct to the source and then have found that algae is a cleaner alternative in terms of heavy metal Mm -hmm. accumulation than um, most fish oils out there. And then again, the DHA and EPA versus um, ALA, which is the plant-based form of omega-3 is very important during pregnancy because our ability to convert ALA into the usable form that baby needs is very inefficient. And omega-3 is one of the nutrients that we see the widest, um, one of the widest deficiencies um, in pregnancy and um, has some of the largest body of research around where omega-3 you know, deficiency can drive um, suboptimal outcomes, including um, a pretty extensive kind of Cochrane review, um, which is a, you know, a very prominent um, research organization about the linkages between low omega-3 DHA rates and preterm births. Oh, um, and then collagen protein. Protein is something that our understanding of what a woman needs during pregnancy, I think, has been most recently updated in terms of um, now we understand that you you need almost your um, your body weight in grams of protein mm. versus we used to think sort of dosages were around that, but sort of your body weight throughout pregnancy in grams of protein um, is where some of the most research most recent studies are landing to support optimal outcomes for mom and baby. And we found collagen is a very easy way to be able to add um, additional protein into the diet. It's neutral tasting. So I throw it into oatmeal, throw it into pasta sauce, and um, throw it into hummus on top of smoothies and some of the other ways. And then collagen is also particularly important because some of the underlying amino acids aren't readily available in other protein sources that we eat, like glycine and proline that are particularly important for pregnancy, building placenta, um, immune health, et cetera. I think it's fantastic to ha- that you have a collagen protein and you mentioned that it's, it's you know, pretty tasteless because I imagine there's people who are listening thinking, uh, you know, that's a, that's a decent amount of protein that I need to take my body weight in grams. And then I know for me, I think of, you know, your traditional protein scoops and I haven't found one that doesn't taste kind of harsh, you know, like you can tell that it's protein and, you know, that might, that might be a bit much to be having several smoothies like that or whatever, but, um, it's great that you all have something that you can just throw in, you mentioned pasta sauce, coffees. And we've done that. it. Yeah. And mm-hmm. we've done it. We've I remember you used, to, it. you used to put it in your, in your coffee mm-hmm. and, um, to have something that's pretty neutral tasting is, is fantastic. Yeah, I think having that and the the, the versatility, certainly. And, you know, before pregnancy, most women ate on average of between like 50 and 70 grams of protein. So having to kind of, in many cases, you know, double double that or more um, is is not easy. Yeah. 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 Being pregnant too, you think, how many more hard boiled eggs and chicken breasts can I eat? You know, (laughs) like I can't do it anymore. (laughs) Totally, totally. And then, yeah, I think the the last product, maybe my favorite, is a pre probiotic. So we know the maternal microbiome is incredibly important, both for um, pregnancy outcomes, how mom feels through pregnancy, but also mom gives her microbiome to baby. Mm -hmm. This starts in utero. We used to think the uterus was a sterile environment. We now understand it has its own microbiome and sort of that microbiome seeding of baby continues through pregnancy, through the birth process, through skin to skin, through breastfeeding. And um, I think being able to optimally kind of focus on how do we put mom's microbiome in an optimal state at this stage um, was such an important part of the equation that sort of we were surprised that there hadn't been as much intentional focus on it. So our pre and probiotic is designed with um, kind of strains at clinically researched dosages that are known to support um, the kind of positive pregnancy and birth outcomes and baby development outcomes for mom and baby. So very targeted to this life stage 
and then also has some prebiotics that are the food for some strains that we can't yet supplement with. Mm. Love it. Well, you, you, it keeps going because you have also <laughs> addressed the fellas, the men folk, because they're a big part of the equation in creating a baby and fertility. And so sperm health is something that came into our awareness very recently in our lives. I mean, after having a baby, yeah, I, mean, I learned I, more about it. I was never taught anything about sperm health really in school or any of those, you know, sex ed classes that we do. Mm -hmm. um, I, I hadn't really heard much about about sperm health. Um, and so I'm very excited to hear a little bit more about what you all have, because this is a, an area that as somebody who um, does pay attention to my health, is very intentional about what I eat and what I put in my body, um, to know that there are things that I can take that can impact specifically or designed to impact the health of my sperm. It's mm -hmm. got, you know, it it has me um, interested for sure. Yeah, it's a, it's an interesting kind of conundrum in that, like, I think the the importance of male fertility and sperm health as part of um, pregnancy and conception outcomes, in some cases, I think colloquially is very not understood, yeah. not known, not well spoken about. But then in other yeah. cases, the body of research around how sperm quality can be improved is pretty substantial. I think a hmm. lot of that because um, it's easier to study sperm sure. than it is egg health or some of the, you know, the changes throughout pregnancy. So it is a, a funny conundrum, but what we do know now and what we're increasingly, I think, being able to collectively understand is that men optimally would have nutritional support while trying to conceive as well. That men really should be taking a prenatal too. And up to 40% of infertility or recurrent pregnancy loss is actually male factor driven, um, which is wow. something that I think many are had no idea no. about. Yeah, you never hear about that. And a woman might be trying to like, you know, continuously do everything to sort of improve herself without ever sort of really looking to her partner and what can um what can he do. Yeah. So with sperm health, we are really looking to improve kind of sperm parameters around count, motility, morphology, um, and really the sperm's microbiome itself because mm -hmm. sperm actually have their own microbiome which i think really affects the the three sort of things i said before sort of size shape and how well they move um to be able to um find an egg and we now understand that um nutrition and environment dramatically impact um those sperm quality factors mm. what's amazing is that Sperm regenerates about every 90 days. So you have the ability to kind of change, um, remove environmental toxins and add beneficial nutrients to really impact sperm quality over a 90 day period, which is, I think, incredibly empowering um, for folks to realize that, oh, yeah. you know, change can happen that quickly. Pretty quick. Yeah. Um, so with that, like we, um, we really designed, um, we wanted to support our men too. So like our female complete plan, we designed a complete plan for men that includes three products, um, a men's multivitamin that like our um, female line includes optimally dosed and optimal nutrient forms um, for men at this life stage and omega-3. Um, like what we talked about on the female side, very similar product, EPA, DHA, and also includes um, choline and some really potent antioxidants, which are known to work well with EPA and DHA together. And then a pre-probiotic that is specifically designed to support um, male fertility and sperm quality. And again, all of these products um, are really sort of intended and designed for starting, you know, preconception, at least three months, that 90 day window before trying to conceive certainly benefits from starting even earlier, but they also are something that you can continue to take throughout your dad years mm. because truthfully, like 
optimal fertility is just a signal that everything else in your body is working well. So many, yeah, you know, that. will promote other benefits like hair health and libido and energy and heart health and the list goes on. That's, That's great. great. So, you know, you're in the trying to conceive stage as a man, you become pregnant, you still have a bunch of pills left in your bottles, keep taking them or hang on to them for those first couple of weeks postpartum <laughs> is what I'm hearing. Yeah. Get that little like extra energy boost when your little one comes for yeah. sure that there is, you know, it's really kind of most important to take it in the preconception period, but there's, um, there's not really any reason to start because, you know, the data does suggest that unfortunately food is most often not giving us everything that we need Mm. to feel our absolute best. And these products are really intended to be that, that added layer of support to set you up to, to thrive where we started. Yes. Uh, And I just have to add too, with the addressing the male component, I believe it creates this really beautiful space for uh, both parents, both soon to be parents to be in the experience together, um, yeah. you know, and, and, and to, to own it together. And I feel like it could just really increase your, your intimacy, your conversations, your closeness, your commitment to the, to the process and the experience of creating a baby, you know, that you're in it together. I really like that piece of it. Absolutely. And I think that ability to have the, the conversation sooner, because certainly, yeah. you know, as a company, we are most focused on, nutrition, but really like we're talking about how do we optimally nourish families and nutrition is just one part of the equation. I think the ability to like start those connective conversations, how do you share the load, et cetera, et cetera, with your partner as soon as possible, I think all adds to that, um, that Mm -hmm. sentiment of how do we, how do we feel supported? How do we feel nourished? And I love that you provide so much education as well. You really serve your community so much. You you have the products, all these different options, all these variations in which you can jump in. But then but by just being a part of the needed community, you know, I've been aware of you all for a while and we've connected a number of times. So to just check out all the other things that you do, you put out on your website, you put out on yeah. social media, it's it's really, you know, you're covering a lot of bases and you're really becoming this, this pillar of, of health and wellness in general for, for families. And so I really appreciate that. I am Thank wondering, you. and I think yeah. we, you know, we're really doing this. We, we want to change sort of the standard of care that don't think the standard of care is supporting families optimally right now. And I think yeah. it takes a long time for, you know, systems to change for research to change. Um, how kind of large organizations operate and how the government sort of moves standards, but a collective voice of more educated, you know, moms and dads and consumers is just, it's so powerful, I think, in in moving the needle forward and making sure um, many more sort of families are able to get kind of the best support that works for them. And education is just, is critical to that. Mm -hmm. Could you give or could someone find on your website or through your information, someone listening right now, I'm imagining who hasn't picked up a prenatal yet, you know, and maybe they're in that preconception or someone who's ready to toss whatever they were taking, Hmm. where would you recommend they start? Yeah. So basically it might be helpful to go to that review guide that I had suggested before. If you email us or DM us, our Instagram's at needed or email us at hello at this is needed. We can send you the link. You can also find it on the blogs by searching prenatal review. Um, But if you want the link sent directly, I think that's a, it's a guide of both what to look for and how do you start to kind of read labels for yourself to understand what to look for. I think that can be an extraordinarily helpful starting place. Mm -hmm. And then, um, I mean, certainly our complete plan was really designed to make it easy for you to feel confident that you are sort of getting everything that you need with a sort of a very diverse and wide group of, um, prenatal oriented practitioners that are advocating to say, this is why sort of we stand behind um, this plan. 
That's brilliant. And I'll yeah. find the link to that guide and I'll put it in the show notes of this episode Perfect. along with your website, your social media, and any other ways to connect with you all. Um, and we are, if any other questions come up, like I think don't hesitate to use those same channels to mm-hmm. ask your questions. Like we're, we're, we're very much here to help. Yeah, you are it's very fantastic. accessible because this can be overwhelming. You know, yeah, so it it's a lot be. of fancy letters and acronyms and names and numbers and statistics. Yeah. yeah, we're talking about biochemistry, <laughs> yeah. you know, yeah. numbers, like yeah. well, this goes on. <laughs> yeah, you're like I'm just trying to cook a baby. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, thank you so much, Ryan. We really appreciate you and Julie. Everyone go check out Needed. Go to their website. Start your prenatal nutrition. Yes. Uh, really any part of the journey before as they say, during and after. So thank you so much. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you both. We appreciate it. I'm so glad to be part of the Doing It At Home community. Quick note about the Doing It At Home podcast. Matthew and I are not doctors or medical professionals, and nothing we say should be taken as medical advice or opinion. If you have medical or health-related questions, please take them to a trained professional. We're here simply to entertain you with stories and conversations about pregnancy, birth, and parenthood.